Today, we're looking at carbon fiber tubes, what the different types are and how to choose the right one for your application. Carbon fiber tubes are used everywhere, from drone frames to engine braces, basically wherever you need the highest strength and stiffness to weight ratio. But there are a few different types available on the market, so how do you choose the right one? And how does their performance compare to that of steel and aluminium? Well, that's exactly what we're going to cover today. We'll be burning, bending and breaking these tubes to demystify what they're all about and help you make a more informed decision. I'm Paul from Easy Composites, and if you have an application for tubing that might benefit from the incredible properties of carbon fibre, stick around as we get into the details. Let's first look at the two main types of tube that you're going to find commercially available. These are pultruded and roll wrapped. If we take a close look at the pultruded tube, you'll see that we have a smooth inner and outer surface. And if you look really closely, you might just about be able to make out the fibers running down the length. Now, if we look at the roll wrap tube, these can vary in appearance, but this particular one has a gloss surface finish with a twill weave pattern. But you might also find them looking like this. And so we don't have the weave pattern on the outside, but we do have these slight ridges that are left by the manufacturing process. In order to understand what's going on inside these tubes, I'm now going to take a blowtorch to them. By using a gas torch, it's possible to burn out the resin matrix from the tubes, leaving only the fiber, so we can better see their construction. Burning of the resin matrix like this is a really useful way to reverse engineer a composite component, as it reveals the fiber's weave style, weight, and orientation for every ply in the laminate. In competitive industries like motorsport and cycling, I know that a lot of parts get purchased only to be burned for this exact reason. Let's first take a look at the pultrusion. Now that we have these fibers exposed, you can clearly see that all of the filaments of carbon fiber are running longitudinally down the length of the tube. And pultrusions are made by taking carbon fiber tow like this, passing it through a resin bath before pulling it through a heated die to form the tube. And it's this pulling action that gives pultrusions the name pultrusion, as opposed to extrusion that you would find in other polymer industries. You can think of the performance of pultrusions as similar to a bamboo cane in that they're very stiff, but will easily split down their length. The pultrusion process generally suits smaller tube sizes. These are ranging right down to 0.7 millimeters, and yes, this one on the end here is still a tube through to around about 12 millimeters. They can be made larger than this, but this is the most common range that you'll find, as once you get to 15 or 20 millimeters in diameter, generally speaking, the properties of a roll wrap tube would be preferred. So let's look at that roll wrap tube we burnt out earlier. You can see here that we have a layer of woven cloth on the outer surface. Then underneath this, we have a large proportion of unidirectional fibers running down the length and also, it has unidirectional layers that run in the hoop direction. This type of tubing is made using an entirely different process from the pultrusion. Each tube is made up from several plies of pre pro carbon fibre, which are tightly wrapped around a mandrel before being wrapped with shrink tape and oven cured. With a typical laminate stack like this, these tubes do sacrifice some of their longitudinal strength and stiffness for hoop strength. By doing this, it makes them much less prone to crushing and splitting. As you can see here, it's able to withstand the splitting force much better than the pultrusion did. They're also slightly better at taking torsional loads, and they're just generally more robust for most applications. This manufacturing process suits larger diameters than pultrusion does, and they start at around about 6 mm and run through to 60 mm and beyond. Stock roll wrap tubes will nearly always have this 0 and 90 degree fiber orientation, but the roll wrapping process does allow you to do absolutely any fiber orientation at all. So whether that's setting out the fibers helically to give you better torsional performance for something like a prop shaft, or adding more in the hoop direction to make it be able to withstand more internal pressure. In theory, you could even run entirely unidirectionally down the length of the tube like a pultrusion, but generally there wouldn't be much point in this as the pultrusion process would be more cost effective. Although pultruded and roll wrap tubes are definitely the most common types of tubes that you will encounter, there are other ways to make them. Namely, pull winding, which is very similar to the pultrusion process, but introduces additional fibers helically to increase the torsional and hoop strength of the tube. 
Then we've got filament winding, which winds a filament around a mandrel. This process is generally used when you need higher hoop strength, for example, in a pressure vessel. And then there's also molded tubes, which use an outer mold and an inner bladder. This method would be used if you're trying to make more complex shapes. And maybe these are methods that we could touch on in a future video. The main reason that you're probably considering using carbon fiber is for its mechanical performance. So we're now going to conduct some testing to get some comparative data on both the pultruded and the roll wrap tubes, along with some benchmarks of 304 stainless steel and 6063 aluminium. As you're likely to already have some hands-on experience with these materials, it should make the whole thing that bit more relatable. Do note that stainless steel does have higher strength than regular mild steel. So this is worth bearing in mind when you're looking at the results. All of the profiles that we're using are exactly the same with a 10 mm outside diameter and an 8 mm ID. I'll make it perfectly clear at this stage that we're not working to any specific test standards as there really aren't any that would work for all of the materials on test. Also the units we've converted from the correct SI units into kilograms of load. Now I know that this is going to grate on a lot of you but for the majority of people I'm sure that 700 kilograms is a lot more informative than 1.3 gigapascal for example. While we're on the excuses a lot of the grips and the fixtures that you're going to see me using I've just made for this video and they certainly do have some compromises. That said those compromises are most likely to negatively impact the composites more than they are the metals. Right with all that out of the way, let's get on with the first test, which is a simple tensile test. Here we just pull on the tubes until they fail. First we have the stainless steel. At the start of the test, the steel is within its elastic limit, as indicated by the constant gradient. When the gradient starts to reduce, this indicates the elastic limit of the material or its yield point, after which it's deforming permanently and so it's this yield point that's most relevant, rather than the ultimate strength just before the tube breaks completely. The aluminium follows a similar profile but with a far lower yield strength. Although aluminium is significantly less stiff than steel, these tensile tests were done without the extensometer that would be needed to produce accurate stiffness data. So we shouldn't pay too much attention to the gradient of these graphs. Onto the pultruded carbon tube. The line stays completely straight as the load on the tube passes the yield point of the stainless steel before continuing on to fail suddenly at over two tons but you can see how the tube fails at the grip. This is due to the less than ideal gripping method that applies a sharp bite. And so in reality, I would have expected it to take far more load without this concentration of stress. The roll wrap tube follows a very similar profile as the previous one, failing slightly sooner than the fully unidirectional pultrusion and also showing a bit less stiffness. Again, it's breaking prematurely at the grip. With the results side by side and considering the yield point of the metals to be the point of failure, you can see here the tensile strength of the four different materials. The pultruded carbon tube with the highest strength, taking over two tons of load, followed by the roll wrap tube, then the stainless steel, and in last place the aluminium yielding at around half a ton. Although in this test the metal tubes measured broadly in line with their expected performance, the clamping method really didn't suit the composite tubes and in fact caused them to fail at less than half their theoretical tensile strength. Had they not failed in this way, the pultrusion should have measured three times the tensile strength of steel and 16 times that of the aluminium. Moving on to the compression test, the stainless steel elastically compresses before starting to yield and plastically bend. As in the tensile test, the aluminium follows a similar profile but yields under a much lower load. The pultrusion fails again at the grip and continues to crush out from a single point, making for quite an interesting looking result. The roll wrap tube crushes in a very similar and interesting way, compressing slightly more easily but failing under the same load. So looking at the results side by side, our stainless steel tube is once again the top performer failing at one and a half tons, with the pultruded and roll wrap tubes at just under a ton and the aluminium bringing up the rear having failed at around half a ton. We're now going to test the torsional performance. It is particularly difficult to get a good grip on these and so although we might not be able to force them to failure, we can still compare how they perform at a known torsional load. 
Starting with the stainless, we first took the tube to five newton meters of torque, which is about the same amount you can apply with a screwdriver. Then we record the degrees of rotation at this point, before then continuing on to apply more force, which eventually became more than the grips could take and the tube started to slip. We did the same with the aluminium, reading off the rotation at our known 5 newton meters before increasing the load again, which caused the tube to slip in the grips before we could break it. The pultruded tube offered much less resistance to the torque, twisting quite a long way before failing not long after. Moving on now to the roll wrap tube, this did resist the torque a bit better than the pultruded tube, and then when it went on to fail, it did so in a more progressive way. To compare the torsional stiffness of these tubes, I've charted the newton meters of torque required per degree of rotation at five newton meters, which is before anything started to break or slip. The stainless is way ahead, with five newton meters causing only one degree of twist. The aluminium twisted three degrees, and then both of the carbon fiber tubes fared very poorly, with the roll wrap twisting 20 degrees, and in last place, the pultruded tube with a whopping 26 degrees of rotation. Finally, we have the flexural three-point bend test. First up, we have the stainless steel, which showed the highest stiffness on test before it yielded under around 150 kilograms of load and proceeded to bend plastically until the test concluded. The aluminium did the same, deflecting, then yielding and bending plastically, although under far less load than the stainless. The pultrusion deflected, then failed by crushing and cracking suddenly as we've come to expect. Roll wrap tube performed impressively before eventually cracking and crushing in a similar way to the pultrusion in most cases. But in one test repeat, it did fail with a bit more drama. We can see from the results that in the three point bend test, it was the roll wrap tube that took the highest load, failing at 200 kilos, followed by the stainless at 175, the pultruded tube at around 140, and the aluminium at around 50 kilos. It's this test in particular that really shows the advantage of the hoop fibers in the roll wrap tube, as they limit the effect of the crushing force applied by the test, and are why roll wrap tubes outperform pultruded ones when they're loaded in this way. However, if we factor in the weight of these materials to give us the specific performance properties, then you can now see that things dramatically shift. With a density of around 8 grams per cubic centimetre, 304 stainless is over 5.5 times heavier than carbon fibre at 1.5 grams per cubic centimetre, and even aluminium is nearly double the density at 2.7. So adjusted for the weight, the aluminium and stainless perform in a very similar way, with the carbon fibre tubes now way ahead. And if we look again at those earlier charts, and now adjust each of these to factor in for the weight of the material, we see that in all but the torsional test, the carbon fiber tubes are in a different league to the metal ones, which clearly illustrates why carbon fiber is so often the best choice for weight critical structures. Now that we have a better understanding of the construction and performance of both types of tube, it should be easier to make a decision on which type of tube is likely to be the best for any given application. But there are some other things to consider, so let's summarize those mechanical testing results, have a look at some typical applications, and also factor in any other things that might influence your decision, starting out with the pultruded tube. We've now learned that in pure tensile and compressive loads, these tubes offer exceptional performance. The 100% unidirectional fiber orientation means that when loaded correctly down their length, they're about as strong as a carbon fiber tube can be. That said, this does come at the compromise of its torsional performance and also they are more prone to crushing and splitting. Applications for pultruded tubes are things like arrow shafts, push and pull rods in UAVs and model aircraft, robotic applications, tent poles, and kite frames. They're also often embedded into other materials like plastic, foam, and wood to increase their stiffness. This will be in applications like foam wing structures or guitar necks. Basically, pultrusions are used wherever you need small diameter tubing, but your application doesn't impart significant torsional or hoop loadings. The smaller diameters of these tubes are quite flexible, so I'm just going to go through and bend some of these by hand to give you an idea of how far they can go. 
starting out with the smallest 0.7mm tube. This is able to bend around a radius of 35mm before it's at risk of breaking. The 1mm tube can achieve 50mm radius, the 1.5 a 75mm radius, the 3mm tube can get to a 250mm radius. Then we're on to the larger sizes, so we've got a 7mm tube here. I can just bend this into a 1.7m radius. Then we've got the 12mm tube, which is offering significant resistance, but I'm just about able to bend in a 8m radius into this. As these tubes are formed in a die, both the inside and outside diameter are reasonably accurate. But if you are looking to telescope these tubes, so say a 4mm OD tube into a 4mm ID tube, as these are size on size, you will probably find that you will need to slightly reduce the diameter of the inner tube. That's easily done in either a lathe or a drill with a fine sandpaper just to take it down slightly. Turning now onto the roll wrap tubes, we saw from the tension and compression test that these tubes performed almost as well as the protruded tubes. But in the three point bend test, where the crush strength provided by those layers of fibre in the hoop direction really makes a difference, they outperform the protruded tube. And likewise, in the torsion test, where that hoop reinforcement provides significant resistance to shear and ultimately splitting. So whilst weight for weight, these hoop fibers do sacrifice a little bit of the longitudinal strength and stiffness of these tubes, they do add a lot of what we sometimes call real world strength, making them more suitable for a wider variety of loads. Because this type of tube is made around a mandrel, it's the inner diameter that's most accurate on a roll wrap tube, with the accuracy of the outer diameter relying on subsequent finishing. Let's now consider the aesthetics. Let's be honest, carbon fiber does look cool. And often in a lot of products and a lot of applications, whether that's on a supercar or a super yacht, people want to see that weave. And so the obvious choice would be to go for the gloss woven finish tubes. But it is worth pointing out that the woven finish isn't purely a cosmetic feature. It does also contribute to the hoop strength and helps to limit crack propagation and splintering. And that's the reason why you'll see this woven tubing also used in applications like bicycle seat posts, camera equipment and tripods, ultralight aircraft, and other things like the arms of a multi-rotor drone. Another thing worth noting on the woven finish tubes is that as the outside surface has been accurately ground and then clear coated, the accuracy of the outer diameter is going to be much better than you would get from the plain finish tubes that we're going to look at shortly. Just like with the poltrusions though, if you did want a sliding telescopic fit, you are likely to need to do a small amount of fettling to that inner tube. But if these are just going to get inserted into a fitting or into a socket, the accuracy is likely to be good enough straight out of the box. So we'll now move on and look at the plain finish tubes. This type of tubing would be used in applications where maybe the aesthetics are not that important, where you won't really benefit from the added protection provided by the woven layer, and the outside diameter is less critical on dimensional tolerance. This could be lots of different applications, whether that's a tiller extension, UAV wing spars, robotic arms, rowing oar shafts, or even just simple window cleaning poles. We've learned that carbon fiber tubes can offer real performance gains over metals, but that doesn't mean that they're right for every application. For example, in high temperature use, the mechanical properties of standard carbon fiber tubing will start to severely deteriorate after around 120 degrees C, which is about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. They're also not very good in high abrasion applications like sliding bushings or bearings. These shouldn't run directly on the surface of the carbon as it will wear very, very quickly. Then there's precision machining, things like cutting threads. Carbon fiber does not hold a thread very well at all. If you did need a thread at the end of a tube, the way you would normally achieve this is to bond in some metal inserts with the thread cut onto that. Then there's joining the tubes. Unlike metals, which can simply be cut and welded, Carbon fiber would either need to be wrapped over with composite reinforcement or have complicated joining elements machined for it. Then there's forming. It can't be formed after it's been cured, so it always wants to return to its original shape. So if you wanted a complex shape, say a bicycle handlebar, you will need to mold it in that way. Now, if this is something you're interested in learning about, then I will put a link in the description to a video where we cover this exact topic.
Even considering these limitations, in the right application, carbon fibre can offer unparalleled performance, which is why Easy Composite stocks all the engineering grade carbon fibre tubes you've seen featured in this video and supply them to a whole host of industries worldwide. But what if you have an application that isn't covered by this stock range of sizes? Maybe you need a particular fibre orientation or wall thickness. If you do, then click on this video where I demonstrate a relatively simple process that will allow you to make your own roll wrapped carbon tubes. If you have any questions at all on our range of tubing or need any advice or assistance on which tube would be right for your application, don't hesitate to get in touch with our technical team who would be more than happy to help. From everyone here at Easy Composites, Thanks for watching and see you next time.